Well, good evening, Riverside, and welcome to our Wednesday evening Bible study. I'm glad that you could join us, and I hope all of you are doing very well and uh, can still continuing to, to hold up under the, the present circumstances. Uh, not the best, not what we would want, but uh, uh, this is what we have, so we're, we're doing the best that we can with what we have. And just to let you know, uh, our shepherds and our safety team have been in conversations with each other, uh, talking about uh, the best way for us to come back together safely. And uh, there are just so many things to consider uh, with everything that's been happening uh, the last several weeks. And uh, just, just so many things to think about in order to make sure that everybody is, is safe and healthy. Uh, we don't want to put anybody at risk. And uh, we don't want to be hasty about this. And as you know, there's, there's just an overwhelming flood of information out there. And even among our medical professionals... Uh, there is some debate about what the best approach uh, to this is and, and when do we open things back up again. And so there's not even agreement uh, among the experts. And so uh, we're doing the best that we can to try to figure all of this out and to, uh, to listen to those that we hope know what they're talking about and then try to distill that information in order to figure out uh, what applies to us specifically in our particular situation, uh, because obviously we don't want anybody to become sick uh, with this virus. Uh, we want everybody to be healthy. Uh, so uh, please pray for your shepherds and for uh, the members of the safety team as they uh, consider all of the variables and all of the logistics involved in bringing us back together safely. And uh, as soon as a decision is made about when we're going to come back together, certainly we will put that word out. We'll send out emails and it'll be on Facebook, I'm sure, and on the church's website. And probably we'll make some phone calls as well. So uh, you will be notified as soon as that decision is made. And I'm sure along with that announcement, there are going to be some instructions about uh, some protocols that we likely will have to follow uh, just to make sure that, that every, everyone is uh, safe and, and we're uh, not putting anybody at risk. And some of those things may seem strange, uh, they may make us feel awkward or a little bit uncomfortable, but uh, if, if we will just all be patient and understanding and work together, and just in case somebody was coming back from the kitchen when I said that, if we can all just be patient and understanding and work together, uh, then it'll be fine and we'll be able to come back together and we'll be able to worship together uh, hopefully very soon. So uh, keep your, your shepherds and the, the, the safety team in your prayers. Well, we've been talking about the Beatitudes for the last few weeks in our, our Wednesday evening study, and we're gonna continue that uh, this evening. And the Beatitudes, of course, are part of the beginning of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, and uh, what a wonderful sermon it is. If you haven't read through the entire sermon, Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7 in one sitting, uh, if you've not done that recently, I encourage you to do that, to just get a feel for uh, the sermon as a whole and how these Beatitudes fit into the sermon. And what a wonderful way for Jesus to begin this this sermon because 
uh, as he begins his ministry, his, his ministry really is all about people. His ministry is not just how we can respond to him and, and, and how we are to treat him, but his ministry also and, and our relationship with him is very much about how we respond to other people and how we respond to each other. And so a lot of the instruction that he gives in this sermon uh, is about that relationship that we have with other people. And he begins this sermon with these beatitudes. And basically he's, he's asking in, in all of these beatitudes, he's, he's, he's stating these against the question, is this you? Is this who you are? Because these are the, the people that are going to be his followers. These are the people uh, whom God looks with favor upon. God blesses these people, uh, these people who share these, uh, these features, these, these attributes, these characteristics. And so we, uh, we look at each of these beatitudes, and this evening we're on the third one. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And so blessed are the meek. And, and who are the meek? A meekness, uh, it seems, has a bad connotation today. And it, it might even be uh, safe to say that it has an incorrect uh, connotation today. Because I think typically when the world thinks of meekness, what does it think of? Doesn't it think of meekness as being a sign of weakness? Uh, they sound the same, and they, the, the world kind of thinks uh, those things are synonymous. Meek is weak, uh, but that's, that's far from what Jesus is wanting us to understand about this quality uh, of meekness, and as we're going to see, I think uh, it, there is really a, a, a character character of, of strength to being a meek person, and that will sound very strange to the ears of the world, but to the follower of Jesus, uh, that person will know exactly uh, how those fit together. Uh, Jesus describes himself as a meek person. And I don't, think we would, I don't think we would think of Jesus as being weak or passive or, or, or a milk toast kind of individual, although uh, that's the way he is portrayed uh, in, in so much of our artwork. He, he appears almost to be effeminate uh, in many of the, the paintings that artists have, have painted of him of, as a very uh, weak, uh, spineless almost individual. That's not who Jesus was at all. Uh, Jesus was a very strong person. He, he was a man's man. And, uh, but he still, he, he describes himself as meek. He says in Matthew chapter 11, beginning at verse 28, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And that word translated there, gentle, that's the same word in the Beatitude. Blessed are the meek. And so the, the idea of, of meekness involves uh, an attitude of gentleness. Uh, it, it's a word that conveys the idea of a, a friendly disposition. A meek person is a kind person. Uh, a meek person is courteous. Uh, a meek person is considerate. But it in, in no way suggests a weakness. In fact, uh, again, it's just the opposite, really. Because to be meek 
uh, requires a certain level of strength because as we'll see, to be meek means to be disciplined. And it, it means to be self-controlled. And you think back to times when you've had to self-discipline yourself or self-control, exercise self-control. That calls for some strength, doesn't it? I mean, you may have wanted to react in a certain way, but you knew that was not a godly way to respond. And so you, you quelched that temptation. And that, that requires some strength. And so that's what Jesus is talking about here. The ability to be self-controlled and self-disciplined. To respond to others in a kind and a courteous and a considerate way. And we see Jesus doing that a number of times, don't we? Even, you think back, even to when he was hanging on the cross. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And so here he's in a situation where he's been horribly abused, horribly mistreated, the greatest injustice, and yet he's not lashing out. That's, that's this quality of meekness, this quality of gentleness. One author makes the observation that meekness is not a natural quality for mankind. And that's why, this author says, Paul lists it among the fruits of the Spirit. Over there in Galatians chapter 5, uh, verses 22 and 23, verse 23 Paul lists gentleness and self-control. And that word gentleness, again, that's the same word that's used uh, here in the Beatitude for meek or meekness. You think back to the Old Testament. Moses was described by God as a meek man. From the book of Numbers, it reads, this is Numbers Chapter 12 and verse 3, it says, Now the man Moses was very meek, more than all people who were on the face of the earth. And I don't know about you, but when I think of, of Moses, meekness is not the first thing I think of. You know, we, we remember all the stories of, about Moses and how he he stood up to Pharaoh and he spoke the word of God to the ruler of the greatest empire on earth. <laughs> you know, that took some guts, didn't it? That took some courage. And yet God describes him as very meek, more than all the people on the face of the earth. And then we, we think about Moses leading people the people out of Egypt and, and leading them to the Red Sea and through the Red Sea. and I, I just don't think of, of Moses as, as a meek man. But then, you know, you, you, you really stop and think about it, and it, especially in terms of, of meekness being really a sign of strength, then yeah, Moses was meek, wasn't he? Uh, he was considerate. He was kind. But he was strong. He was not afraid. He was indeed a, a meek individual. So how can we expand uh, even further on this, this quality of meekness? Well, when Jesus gave the beatitude there, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. That language is, is not exactly new when, when Jesus says that. Likely when he said that in, in the ears of the Jews, they had heard similar language to that before. And it's likely what came to their mind was the 37th Psalm. So if you would turn over to Psalm uh, 37, 
And I'm going to read just the first 11 verses of this psalm. David writes, Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers. For they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself, it tends only to evil, for the evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. In just a little while, the wicked will be no more. Though you look carefully at his place, he will not be there, but the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant peace. And so you hear it there, don't you? The meek shall inherit the land. And what we see uh, in this psalm is, is really David is giving us here a pretty good description of, of an individual who has this quality of meekness. He, he's, he, he, he doesn't give us the, the title until we get down to verse 11, the meek. But it's the meek, really, he's been describing. He gives all these, these different characteristics of of what these people are like and, and what they're thinking and what they're going through. And then he kind of brings it all down to a conclusion. The meek, those I've just been describing, the meek will inherit the land. And so who are these? Who are these people? Well, they're the people who trust in the Lord. You know, they're, they're, they're the people, they, they, they do not allow the actions of others to dictate what their actions are going to be. You know, they're not going to allow the actions of others to determine how they are going to respond. Here's where that strength comes in. And so these are people who are trusting in the Lord, even though they, they see things happening and the things that they see, that, that they're not right, it's not fair, but they're continuing to trust in the, in the Lord. They're not lashing out against anybody. They're, they're self-controlled, they're disciplined, and they're trusting in the Lord. And they, they find delight in the Lord. He says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. These are, these are pe the meek are people who delight in the Lord. Now that's not the world, is it? Sadly, our world does not find delight in the Lord. They, they see the Lord as restrictive. They see him as exclusive. That They see him as, as wanting to just say no to everything. And of course, that's not who he is. You know, he says no for a reason. He, say, he says no because he knows that's, that will be of benefit to us. But that's not the way the world takes him. And so the world finds no delight in the Lord. But the meek do. Because the meek understand who God is. The meek understand that, that God wants the best for his people. And so he's going to give his people the guidance that they need so that they can be fruitful. And so the meek delight in the Lord. The person who finds delight in the Lord, his will becomes 
their will. The Lord's will becomes their will. And he says they commit their ways to him. They, they, take, they find such delight in the Lord that they, they turn their life over to him. They're going to commit their way to him. They're going to follow his guidance. They're going to be obedient as his people. These are the meek. These are the meek. And those who are meek are able to, to be still and to be quiet and to wait for the Lord. We had a lesson on waiting for the Lord a couple of weeks ago. And that's, that's who the meek are. They're not weak. They're, they're not spineless, milk-toast people. They're, they're content to wait on the Lord because they believe He is all-wise, He is all-knowing, and He is going to, to take the appropriate steps. And so they're going to wait on Him. As they see these, these terrible things going on, they're going to wait on the Lord. And they're going to let Him deal with those kinds of of situations. It's the meek who are able to do that. Because meekness requires, as, as we said, this, this self discipline, this self control, and that requires strength. And waiting on the Lord requires that as well, because we'll, we'll see a lot of people who obviously don't love the Lord. They want nothing, nothing to do with Him. And, and yet we see how they prosper. And, and we may think, well, why is that? How can God allow these people to be so successful? Well, that's where we call for that self-control and that self-discipline. And we don't lash out. We wait on the Lord. And that requires strength and courage. Those are the meek. Someone defined meekness this way. Meekness is the power to absorb adversity and criticism without lashing back. It's not a bad definition. And it kind of, kind of sounds like James is writing about this kind of person when he writes there in James chapter 1 beginning at verse 19. Know this, my beloved. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. And in that passage, you, you may have heard the contrast there. We hear about the angry person, uh, the person who is not slow to anger. They're quick to anger. They've got a short fuse. And he describes them there as having all filthiness and, and rampant wickedness. But then that's contrasted with the person who is quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. And they, when, they, when they hear the word of God, they receive that word with meekness. And so that, that tells us uh, another quality about meekness. To be meek then is to be teachable. You know, some people just don't want to be held to a higher standard of truth than they have. You know, they, they've arrived at a, at a level of truth and that's enough. And even if someone shows them a higher level of truth, they don't want to hear it. That's not meekness. Meekness wants to hear it. And it wants to receive it. Because it wants to grow. They receive the word of God. And so there, there is a connection then between meekness and wisdom. James writes about this as well in chapter 3 and verse 13. James writes, 
who is wise and understanding among you. By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. Now that last expression there is, is extraordinary. In the meekness of wisdom. What's that saying? It's saying wise people are meek. It's saying that meek people are wise. You think about the wisest people you have known. Maybe it was your parents. Maybe it was a, a teacher. Maybe it's your spouse. But think about the wisest person you know. Are they not also meek? Isn't it interesting how those two go together? You drop down a, a few verses there in chapter 3, James 3, verse 17. He writes this, But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits impartial and sincere. That's his description of wisdom. But isn't that also a description of meekness? So the meek person is, is wise. The meek person is quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. But he's also pure open to reason, peaceable, full of mercy. Remember, we, we suggested that these attitudes are, are sort of a, a progression of faith. And you look at the position of the meek in this listing of Beatitudes. He has just finished talking about those who mourn for their sin. And he's going, he's about to talk about those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And so we move from mourning from our sin to hungering for righteousness. That's wisdom, isn't it? That takes meekness. He's talking again about a condition of the heart. Well, Jesus says the meek individual shall inherit the earth. Who is it that wants the world today? Isn't it the aggressor? The selfish? The greed-filled individual? The person who takes advantage of the meek? The psalmist again said the meek will inherit the land. In, in David's context, that's, that's describing the faithful Jew who trusted that God was going to deliver them from bondage. He was going to take them into the promised land and he was going to give them this land flowing with milk and honey. The, the meek will inherit the land. Well, here in, in Matthew from Jesus, it's the same kind of idea that the meek, the one who trusts in the Lord the, the one who is disciplined, the one who is, is self-controlled, that person God is going to bless with every, every one of the greatest blessings. He will inherit the earth. And that's the basic idea. He is he, the, 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 the one who empties himself, God is going to fill. God is going to take care of him. God is going to bless him extraordinarily. And so, blessed are the, the meek. What a wonderful quality to strive for. And as we said in our, in our introductory lesson to these Beatitudes, these are, these are not qualities of, of some faithful followers. And other followers have some of the other qualities, but no, no. A faithful follower of Jesus will have all of these qualities 
and meekness is one of these that we need to be striving for. What a wonderful quality. Quiet strength of meekness. Let's close with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we are so very thankful for Jesus and for his teaching. Father, your wisdom is just so amazing. And Father, we, we recognize that every day as we go through life and we see how your words are proven true time and time and time again. And so Father, as you are teaching us about these qualities of life, Father, give us an appetite, give us a hunger for all of these and help us, Father, to strive to fill our lives with all of these qualities. Father, we want to be a meek people, that is, a strong people, a people who are self-controlled and self-disciplined, and a people who are teachable. Because, Father, we want to be wise in every day that we live. Thank you, Father, for loving us Thank you for Jesus. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Have a great evening.